Uh, Richard, um, good to see you. It's been over a year, well over a year since you, you last played. I mean, what's that been like for yourself and as a club as well? Yeah, frustrating. Uh, I think you know, everyone's been in the same boat. Everyone just wanted normality, but the circumstances and, and the times we're in, just, it hasn't been, we just haven't been able to. Um, it's been challenging even just getting back training um, with all the restrictions and, and levels and uh, all the procedures you've got to follow before we can actually, you know, we had to get into contact and, um, and getting ourselves ready for, for competition again. That, that was my next thing, to be honest. I mean, just how, how difficult has it been? What's, what's preparation been like? Yeah, it's, um, it's been tough at times. You know, we, we started off because we only had access to, to the keep mo, um, So we haven't been able to get in a gym um, for the boys to be lifting. And obviously, with gyms being shut, the lads haven't been able to do it away from it unless they've got one uh, in the garage or... Um, a, a, a parent's house so it's um yeah that that's been fairly tough so we're we're back at Cantley now where we we have got gym facilities and lifting and, and it's a little bit why we probably haven't gone down the route of a friendly just yet um didn't want the boys to come back from over a year out um not having full training uh, and having the bodies ready for contact um and then going into it before the season starts and and, and already going into it with injuries yeah, you've, you've freshened up the squad as well. What's your kind of assessment of how the squad's looking going into this season? Yeah, no, we've, we, I've, I've always had a squad of around about 22, 23 this year. We've gone up that eight. We're at 26, 27, I think we are now. Um, so we've got a big squad. We've got some young lads in there um, that you know we've given an opportunity to. Uh, in Joe Fellers from Castleford, uh, Ross Whitmore from from Huddersfield, who have come in and 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 you know they've they've been they're full of energy and training hard uh, and pushing themselves and pushing the, like sort of the old boys in you know that we still got around in in, in Russ Spears in Ryan Boyle um, you know in the, in the, in that pack area um, and obviously we've got Missy in for experience so we've got a real good mix of, of experience and, and youth and energy. And of course, uh, you go back a couple of years. It was it was playoffs. It was playoffs the season before that. Can can you get over the Can you get over the line this season? Do you think? Yeah, we we look. We believe we do. We can. Um, we there have been two semi finals and just to miss out and um, it, it's frustrating. It, it's um, again. It probably came down both of them down to squ- not having a big enough squad. Um, relying a little bit on Joe Reg a little bit too much um, and then when it came to that business end not having them players available from Joe Reg and only having a small squad and we picked up sort of some injuries and players um, played with some injuries that probably they shouldn't have but you know they held their hand up and, and it just it, we just quite we just fell short so hopefully this year with a big squad um, the quality that we've got within the squad we can hopefully go that one step further is, is that something you've moved away from the the dual reg, or will you look at loan players as as you go? Look, it, it all depends on COVID. It all depends on injuries. Um, we could go into the loan market, but that 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 it'd be season long, or it wouldn't be happening. Um, I want lads that are going to be there for for the for the till the end of the year. Um, so there's no there ain't too much chopping and changing of of the team. And how do you assess League One? Is it a competition this season? Very, very much so. You know, you've got Keithley who spent, um, you know, big money probably this year. They're probably the Newcastle, um, what Newcastle did the season before, they've probably done this year in the players that they've brought in. Um, you know, Barrett are always going to be, a, you know, the big, the powerful, um, they play, you know, really direct. It, it is. It's uh, Rochdale have recruited really well. You know, Hunslet are always in and around there with us. Um, so there's a lot of teams challenging. I thought North Wales was a really big progressing team. It'll be interesting to see how they go again this year. Um, so yeah, I think it's wide open for, for for you know for anybody to win the comp. So it's you know we have to be at our best every week. I mean, financially, obviously, the club's taken a, a huge hit over the last 12 months, but by the sounds of it, you, you're quite sort of pleased with the, the group you've managed to put together still. Look, we, we, we asked the players at the beginning when all this happened uh, to take pay cuts and, and 
uh, reduced salaries and they all didn't hesitate to do that. Um, so it's credit to them really doing it. It shows their commitment to the club and, and what we want to do and where we want to go and, and, and the club that we want to be. Matty, um, just a similar question to start with really. I mean, how, how have you been over the last year? How have you coped with it? Yeah, it's been difficult, like Rich was saying, um, not being able to train much. And little things like you, you get out of that routine of going to training. Um, but yeah, it's been hard. It's been the same for everyone, I suppose. But we're back into it now. I'm really enjoying it. How have you been managing without... I mean, Rich mentioned, you know, you can't get in the gym, you can't lift weights. How have you been sort of substituting that, if you like? Uh, well, I'm just trying to do a little bit at home, but um, it is hard, like Rich says, unless you've got something really good set up at home, it's, it is difficult, but I've been trying to do a little bit, it's been going for running. Yeah. Um, and I, to be fair, I feel quite good, I feel fit in myself, so yeah, I've just been trying to take over really, and just, like I say, we're back into it now, so we're, we're training that. Then um, what sort? I mean, you've been around at the club a few years now. What sort of feeling? What sort of vibe do you get from from this group of lads? Very good one, actually. Uh, probably the best best pre season I've had for a long while. Like any team, if I'm honest. Um, like Rich says, he's brought a lot of young lads in, and they're they're uh, pushing pushing everyone. Like it feels good, and um, I'm really excited about this year, actually. Yeah, where, where do you think? Where do you think um, you need the improvement? Where, where, which areas do you think you need to improve on to, to get you over the line? Uh, I think the discipline is a massive thing for us. Uh, we've talked about it already. Um, we do give a lot of penalties away, so if we can cut that out, and um, I think we should be all right defensively as well. I think we could improve there. Our tackle will always score points, so if we can. Back our defence and uh, cut out the, the silly penalties and drop balls, stuff like that. Um, I think we'll go very well. Do you kind of set set yourself individual targets at the start of a season? Um, personally, no, I don't. Um, but others might do. Um, I just try and be the best best I can be every week, I suppose. Uh, um, yeah, I, I don't, but others others may do. So yeah, I can't speak for for others. Yeah, yeah. And and Rich said it like it could be in a very open division this year. What what's your expectations for for Doncaster? Uh, win the league. That that's all. That's <laughs> all I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think I, I, I honestly I think we can. I think we can. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited and. Uh, Rich probably won't like me saying that, but I think <laughs> winning the league is is what we want, and that's what we do. What what gives you that confidence, Matty? Just the way we've been training. Like I said, I, I think we've trained really well, and uh, there's a real good feel around the place. Um, we're looking very good, and I think we can do something special this year touched a lot on, on how difficult the last year has been for everybody, but in terms of you personally, when most of your, your life probably has been surrounded by rugby league, what has it been like for you to have that taken away from the, for the last 12, 13 months? Well, my garden's looking better than what it's always ever has done. <laughs> um, just jobs around the house, yeah. <laughs> Things that um, you, you put off because of rugby, um, you, you sort of... Uh, have to get stuck into but no it as it's it's you know weekends have been long <laughs> you know without it you know we you, you you're always thinking about it in the back of your mind and also planning you know we 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 started with two games in um and you're having to make judgment on players to keep for the following season on two games um and, and obviously strengthening um areas that you think you, you need to strengthen uh, as a, as a group um which I think we've done. I believe we've done. And like I said, the boys have been great. You know, most of them taking pay cuts to stay with us, um, and a, a big majority of them going on to just just pay as you play um, without having contracted money. So it says a lot about the player and um, and, and what they want to do and, and the belief that this club can do. Yeah, and in the in terms of the the planning aspect of things, I suppose it was difficult as well because for so long throughout the season after the 
initial cancellation, there was talk about it coming back and t- coming back at, in May and then push back again. I mean, I suppose you all, even though there was no games to actually physically prepare for, you were always having to prepare to to make that comeback. Yeah, and that was it. Um, I think the, the Challenge Cup was a big call for us because we, we was really keen on being involved in it. Um, but then having to play them preliminary rounds with only having, I think it was, we'd have had three sessions, uh, three weeks under our belt, having a year off. We just didn't feel like the players were ready um, to, to, to be involved in that um, physically um, and probably a little bit mentally as well. Um, so... Again, it was a tough decision by the club to to withdraw from that because um, of the history of it. Uh, <laughs> you know, some of our best performances have been in the cup. Um, so, yeah, it was it, it was a tough decision to play. But again, like I said, it was it's, it's, it's been hard not to to arrange the friendlies. Um, uh, I've just I, I've just wanted the boys to get physically ready for for playing before we actually do. Uh, I didn't want to bring them back too early um, and, and, and risk the fact, fact of injuries before our season even gets going. Um, I know it's going to be tough. Keith Lee have had four games under the belt before we have that round one with them. Um, so they should, they, they'll be um, all guns blazing where, you know, we, we, we'll see where we're at um, and it'll be a good indicator for us to, to, to move on for the season. Yeah, and I suppose on the other on the other side of that, you say Keith, they have had four games, but they've gone into those four games after a, a year out, so they'll have probably picked up some some knocks and some niggles. So they might be going into that first league game not not at the at the strongest as well. Yeah, certainly. There's always that risk. It's that uh, risk and reward, isn't it? it rather it works for you or it doesn't. Um, I know they've picked up one or two. They know their big signing, Wellington and Albert. Um, he's going to be missing for the season, a big signing for them, which would have been, you know, he'd have been a handful in this division. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's not turning up out in round one. Um, uh, but, you know, the other players they've signed, you know, Scott Morell, very experienced in championship and, and, and Super League. Um, you know, QLT, you know, you can go on Jake Webster. You know, they've, they've recruited really big, um, spent a lot of money. Um, so, they not won't be surprised if they're they're the favourites to, to by the bookies to to win the comp. It'll be out with them and Barra, and uh, they not it gives us something to aim at. You know, everyone's sort of underestimating us, but like Matty said, we've trained really well up to now. Um, as a group, we're at where we need to be, um, and we've got a month now to to, to prepare and 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 get ready for Keefley. Yeah, and you mentioned a lot of the difficulties you you have faced, Charing. Pre-season, but what changes have you had to make from a coaching point of view to sort of fit in with all the regulations and all the the guidelines? And how difficult has that been to make those those changes? Yeah, you know that that stage one phase was <laughs> was very uh, challenging. You know, we all we could do was run them. You know, they had to be two meters apart. They couldn't touch a ball. You know, and when lads are turning up for training, and they know a ball isn't involved. The looks on their faces is it's um is a picture, you know. So uh, again, credit to them, you know, they, they all turned up, they all you know was doing all the, the, the conditioning that we could do with them um until we moved on to the next stage where we could introduce balls and, and introduce contacts and um it, it's it's been long, but um it, it's what's been, it's what we've had to do and we've we've stuck to the guidelines and um you know, we're, we're into that contact stage now, which the boys, you know, that's what they turn up for. That's what they enjoy. Um, not so much probably Matty, but um, I know the rest of them do. Uh, it's it, it, it's it's what they love. So, yeah, we're a bit more smiles on faces when they turn up to training. Yeah, just, just finally for me, I know a lot was expected of the lads in all that time away from the club to, you know, keep, keep themselves fit and keep themselves ready for whenever games... Did come back. Are you are you were you pleased with the condition the players did come come back into that first session with in? Yeah, look, the, the boys did you know they did. We um we, we got some heart rate monitors and that for them, so we could track a little bit on what they were doing and and um the the intensity that they were working at. So that did help. It it, it helped us a lot as a, to to see where from that what that first session where we needed to to work the lads and. And, and what zones they needed to be in to um, get the best out of them, and, and you know it, it was it was um, 
it, it works really well for us. So hopefully round one, it's it's all going to pay dividends and, you know, we, 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 we're confident we can go there and, and get a result. You touched on, you know, the work you've had to do to, you know, the limited work you can do on your own yeah. away from the game. But was motivation to keep doing that ever an issue when you didn't know when when you were next going to be getting training with the lads and when you were next going to be getting playing? Um, at some points was, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, you're kind of training with no real end goal in sight. So you were you were doing your little bits at home and in the back of your mind you were thinking, well, are we ever going to play? So it, sometimes it did get difficult, but like we said, then when he got the heart rate monitors and stuff and they were checking us, it gave give us that extra bit of motivation that you had to go out because you didn't want to be looking rubbish on them scores when it was coming in you didn't want to be the one at the bottom so yeah it was, it was good yeah and in terms of now the games are, are coming round I mean is intensity rising a little bit in training once when the game is getting ever closer yeah I think I think uh, you can tell in training now well, there's a bit more contact the lads are running a little bit harder um, probably a bit too hard for Richie's liking at some time, at some point. But yeah, you, you can tell that it's the uh, first game's around the corner now. So it's, it's getting closer and we can, we can see that end goal and we're, we're all looking forward to it and ready to go. Yeah, and just, just one last point for me. The, the delay to the start of the season, is that going to be a, a benefit as well, given that when you do get get started, it's more than likely going to be in in the in the better conditions that you normally get from, from May onwards rather than you know, the, the boggy pitches and the, the wet games and the playing in the rain and stuff as you to often get in February, March time. Yeah, it'll so it was it'll so it was better as well because we like to throw the ball around. Um I know one wants to go to Keithley's first game of the season in, in February, like you say, on their pitch. So yeah, it'll it'll definitely suit us and uh Obviously, like playing when the sun's shining and throw that ball around, it's it suits us. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, and if you can get that that nice those nice conditions and some fans behind you as well, a few weeks into the season, I mean that's that's really something to to relish and, and look forward to, isn't it? It is, yeah. Looking forward for the for the fans getting back in. I'm sure they've missed their rugby just as much as we have. So it's a, it's exciting. Can't wait for them to get back. And like you say, if we can get that winning start, hopefully more come to and watch us and uh, then we can do some good like I said already.